So hi guys, hi everyone. Welcome to this uh, news chapter, which is mixed allegation. You know we have already finished. We have already finished average. Now we are going to start with mixed allegation. And in mixed allegation, you need to remember something which is very crucial that whenever we do mixed allegation, this is like an application of average. And in case of application of average, there are certain things you have to be very careful while doing mixed allegation. There are few things. So we'll start with that, right? So the first thing we are going to discuss in mixture allegation, like what is mixture and what is allegation. So mixture is something when you can see like if you are mixing two things, that is a mixture. Allegation is like, again, like let's say the amalgam and all of these things, or let's say the alloy, they are basically the allegation. So we are doing mixing, we are making allegations and all of these things are part of in this chapter. But the first thing you have to remember, like this thing, these are the very important thing because this is like the base of this chapter. Like why we call this is a base of this chapter because the first few things you have to understand like whenever we do mixture allegation the first thing you need to understand like it is connected to weighted average. So we will discuss how basically it is connected to weighted average. So let's begin with mixture allegation. So you can see like this is a solution. So what is solution? Solution is basically you can see something where like people are mixing. Let's say I'm mixing water and I'm mixing uh, let's say alcohol. That is basically a solution. Why it is a solution? Because the, I have certain quantity of let's say uh, alcohol, certain quantity of solution, uh, water, then they are mixing to give me a better solution, to give me a solution which constitutes like water as well as alcohol. And this kind of things are also homogeneous. Generally, we talk about homogeneous solution, like milk solution also, like milk and water, they mix it like properly. So if you put at any point, any part of the solution, you'll have the same kind of ratio of milk to water. So this is like kind of homogeneous solutions, right? So let's start with the other things like obviously introduction to allegation. So what exactly we will do in allegation and what it is allegation that you need to understand first, right? Let me give you one, two example first. Take care. So let's say we have two types of, um, let me give you one very good example first. Uh, let's say when I'm starting with introduction, like uh, let's give me a good example. Let's say we have started with those examples what we have already done. Like in that class we have started with, let's say there are two types of, uh, two types of, rice is there one is rupees 50 per kg and one is rupees 100 per kg let's say now let's say they are mixing in the ratio x is to y so that the average price becomes let's say 65 so that the average price becomes 65 now the question is what is the ratio of x to y take care if i need to use the concept of weighted average what will i do I'll do first basic thing, I'll do 50x plus 100y upon x plus y. That will give me 65, right? This is the first way understanding, like if I'm using the method of average and like basically weighted average. So if I do this, this is a weighted average is 65. So if I solve this thing, I'll get 50x plus 100y is equal to 65x plus 65y. Now if I solve this thing, I'll get uh, 65 minus 15, that is 15x is equal to 35y. So what is x upon y? That is 35 upon 15, which is nothing but 7 is to 3. Now I can say like if I mix it in 7 is to 3 ratio, this is a mixture of 50 kg and 100 kg. I'm mixing it in the ratio of what? 7 is to 3 to get a price of 65 on average. So the ratio has to be 7 is to 3. And remember from this thing, you can find the ratio. You cannot find the exact quantity. If one quantity is given, you can find the other quantity. But with only the average, you can only find the ratio. So remember that is very, very crucial. The second thing is also like what else, how else we can solve this question. To solve this question, we also can do this question like this. 50 and 100 is there, right? If 50 and 100 is there, and what is my average? My average is 65. So if my average is 65 so in the left portion i write the cheaper price the cheaper price this is the dearer price like which is costly the cheaper price dearer price and the average price so subtract the average from dearer subtract the average from dearer so what i'll get 35 then subtract the cheaper from average what i'll get 65 minus 50 i'll get 15 so what is the ratio this is the ratio which is same as 7 is to 3 as well so this is like simplest way also you can solve this type of question. This is known as the method of mixture allegation. Let's think about repair, except this 50 and 100. Let's see if it is uh, 100 and 200. 
and if let's say the average price is 120 so the ratio should have been 200 minus 120 is how much 80 and 100 minus 120 is 20 so what is the ratio 4 is to 1 so this is the simplest way you can use the method of mixture allegation to find the ratio directly this is how we can do it right that is the first thing we need to understand here the second thing what we need to understand is what else we can do with this kind of ratio what else we have with this kind of ratio and what exactly we can do with it so I'm giving you two examples for that as well so think about the previous case the previous case let's say in the previous questions we have the ratio if you remember so there are like 30 uh, there are two sections are there the ratio of the people of the section is let's say 3 is to 2 that is 3 is to 2 and the marks let's say are 50 and 60 so I need to find what is the average score of the entire class section A has like uh, section the people of section A the number of students in section A to section B is 3 is to 2 and it is basically in the ratio and the scores are 50 and 60 right I need to find what is the average so in case of average we can do directly the weighted average also what else we can do that we are going to discuss right now what else we can do with this like what exactly we can do with this the first thing you have to understand is let's say x is the average so what I do I'll do 60 minus x because the dearer that is the cheaper and that is the average so dearer minus the average is 60 minus x again this is x minus 50 so this is x minus 50 so can I write x 60 minus x upon x minus 50 is equal to 3 is to 2 can I write this yes so if I solve this thing I'll get 120 minus 2x is equal to 3x minus 150 right so if I solve this I'll get 5x is equal to 270 so what is x x is 54 and we can get 54 directly from this as well right so this is one thing we have already understood we can use the concept of mixture allegation to find even the average also with average we can find the ratio with ratio we can find the average the next important thing is if the quantity is given that is fine but ultimately what we need is the ratio there is another way we can solve this question now check this thing carefully write the cheaper one in the left and the dearer one in the right and what is the ratio that is 3 is to 2 and now I'll solve this thing in one single line and see how it is happening so first I can write down the cheaper price what is the cheaper price 50 plus first time I'm writing the cheaper price I'm writing it down as well cheaper price plus 10 is the difference what is the difference 10 so write down the difference then the dearer's proportion what do you need to do dearer's proportion so what is the dearer's proportion that is 10 into 2 upon 2 plus 3 that is the dearer's proportion because if it is 3 is to 2 what is the proportion of dearer 2 by 2 plus 3 and that is your average which is 54 so in this way you can solve it in one single line let me give you another example of the same thing let's say so let's say the thing is 100 and 200 and the ratio is let's say 7 is to 3 so what is the average so the average is first the cheaper price 100 what is the difference now 100 is the difference and what is the proportion of the dearer price that is 3 upon 3 plus 7 right so your answer is 130 so the average price should have been 130 so in this way you can solve these things in one single line and that is much more important with this also like how exactly we use this thing in a single line to solve this type of question very very crucial while you solve kind of mixed allegation question now think about this question there are two types of varieties of rice a and b the price of rice a is 50 and the price of rice b is 100 in what ratio we should mix so again it's the same question I can write 50 I can write 100 and what is the average 70 so just use the mixed allegation method this is 30 70 minus 50 is 20 so what is the ratio 3 is to 2 you can see how simple this question becomes if I'm using the method of mixture allegation especially the, this is known as a method of allegation right next let's say next do another question a and b with respective strengths have 30 and 20 the same question 30 and 20 the average marks of section a of section b in an examination 50 and 60 find the average marks of the students so it is 50 is given 60 is given and the ratio 3 is to 2 is given so what is your answer first the cheaper one the cheaper one is 50 plus the difference what is the difference 10 now what is the proportion of the higher quantity that is 2 upon 2 plus 3 so your answer is 54 you can solve this question directly you can remember in the previous session we have done these things in a so much difficult calculation it's a longer calculation this is a faster calculation and you can do it in a second so let's start with this one so we are uh, discussing this question that is a b and c so their rice is let's say rice uh, a is 50 per kg 
So if it is 50 per kg, the first thing you need to do is what exactly we have here. So let's say 50 per kg is uh, let's say x, gra x kgs. This 101 is let's say y and this 81 is let's say z. Now if I solve this thing, what we'll get? The weighted average is 50x plus 100y plus 80z upon x plus y plus z is equal to 70. Now this 0 gets cancelled out, this 0, this 0 and this 0 gets cancelled out. So it is 5x plus 10y plus 8z is equal to 7x plus 7y plus 7z. Obviously I have considered x plus y plus z is not equal to 0. So from this thing we can write 2x minus 3y minus z is 0. Now if we solve, this is you can see this is a three variable equation and we have infinite solutions for this, infinite solutions. And whenever we have infinite solutions, let's check some solution that is x equal to 3, y equal to 3 and z equals to 1. One solution, x equal to 3, y equal to 1 and z equals to 3. That gives me one solution, x3, y1, z3, right? That gives me one solution. Second, I'll get that is if x equals to 2, then y equals to 1 and z equals to 1. So this is also one solution. So if I take 3 kg, 1 kg and 3 kg, if I take 2 kg, 1 kg and 1 kg, both will give me the average as 70. So what can I deduce from here? We can deduce one thing that if, if there are three quantities and the average is given, the possible ratio is infinite possibilities. We have infinite possible ratios so that if in that ratio we can mix these three quantities, we will get the same average price. So that's why in those cases, the answer is generally cannot be determined. Remember, now think about like this kind of questions. So before we solve this kind of questions, we will do something else as well, right? So before that, solving this type of questions. So let me give you one particular example of these things, right? Now think about let me start beginning or introducing mixed allegation as well. So this is what we have learned like how exactly this thing happens. Now think about two cases that is like the last thing of our video like two cases we will do. Let's say first is alloy 1 this is A1 in alloy 1 the iron is to nickel is let's say 3 is to 2. In alloy 2 iron is to nickel is let's say 5 sorry 4 is to 1. So the question is alloy 3 has been made by mixing alloy 1 is to alloy 2 in the ratio 7 is to 3. Now the question is in AA3 what is the ratio of iron to nickel? That is less the question. This is a very simple question right? Alloy 1 the iron to nickel is 3 is to 2. Alloy 2 iron to nickel is 4 is to 1. Alloy 3 it is 7 is to 3 A1 and A2. You need to find the iron is to nickel in alloy 3 right? In this case, what exactly you need to do that is much more important of this. So the first thing you have to do here, that is one way you can solve this question. You can take this is seven part, this is three part. So think about in A3. So what is A1? In A3, A1 is seven part and A2 is three part, right? Now think about in seven part, what is the amount of iron? So the amount of iron is seven into three upon five right and amount of, amount of nickel is 7 into 2 upon 5. In case of A2 the amount of iron is 3 into 4 upon 5 and amount of nickel is 3 into 1 upon 5. Clear? So what is the total amount of iron? The total amount of iron is 7 into 3 upon 5 plus 3 into 4 upon 5 and what is the total amount of nickel that is 7 into 2 upon 5 plus 3 into 1 upon 5. Now if you do iron by nickel, so you'll get the ratio of iron nickel in A3. So what is it? Then this is 7 into 3 is 15 plus 3 into 4 is 12. 15 plus 12 is 27. Now next is 14 and this is 317. So it is basically 27 is to 3. 13. So 27 is to, sorry, 27 is to 14 and 3 is 17. So this is 27 is to 17. As you may make calculations are correct. Because 7 into 3, no it's not correct I guess. It is 7 into 3 is 21. So if I just uh, change this thing from here. So here I made uh, low. Right. So it is basically 7 is to. So it is 7 into 3 by 5. So that is uh, 21 plus 12. And in denominator it is 14 plus 3. So it is 33 by 17. So this is one way to solve this type of question, right? 
Now what else we can do to solve this question? What else exactly we can do to solve this question? That is our merger concentration. So in A1, what is the iron percentage? The iron percentage is 3 upon 3 plus 2 into 100, which is 60% iron. If iron is 60%, what is nickel percentage? That is 40, which we don't need to do, but I'm just still I'm writing it down. In case of A2, iron percentage is 4 by 4 plus 1 into 100, which is 80% and nickel has to be then 20%. Now can I solve by using this? Now see what I can do. So just take the iron percentage. It is 60% iron, it is 80% iron, right? Now what is the ratio of these two things? The ratio of these two things is 7 is to 3. Now in this way I can find in A3 what is the amount of, what is the percentage of iron. So how I can do that? Cheaper price, right? The mixed irrigation method. Cheaper price 60, difference is 20. Now into 3 upon 3 plus 7, which is 3 upon 10, which is 6. So I'll get 66% iron in A3. So in A3, if the iron is 66%, what is nickel? That is 34%. And what is the ratio? That is 33 upon 17. So hence, in this way also, you can solve this type of question just by using the concept of mixture allegation. Now, sometime you might ask me why I am using mixture allegation in this format, in percentage format, and why I'm not taking the nickel one also. So for that thing, I'll give you like why I'm not taking nickel. If I'm taking nickel, how I can solve this question? But the answer will have been the same if I'm even I'm taking the nickel as well. So see how this thing is happening. So if I do the nickel thing also, if I do take the nickel also, what is the nickel percentage? 40% nickel and in the next case, the 20% nickel. What is the ratio? 7 is to 3. So how to start with? 20 is the cheaper price plus the difference. What is it? 20 and now the DRR's proportion. That is 20 into 7 by 7 plus 3. What is it? That is 34. If that is, if nickel is 34, then what is iron? Iron is 66. Similarly, what is the ratio? 66 upon 34. The ratio is again 33 upon 17. So any way you can solve, you'll get the same answer, right? You will get the same answer. Some people also say, why cannot I use directly the proportion as well? I can use directly proportion, yes or no? The answer is yes. You can directly use the proportion as well. So what is the proportion of iron? That is 3 by 5. What is the proportion of iron in the second case? That is 4 by 5. So think like this way. So if I use the proportion also, if I use the proportion also, how we can do that without even doing percentage? This is the fourth method, method I'm showing you. Even without doing the percentage, I can use the proportion how we can do that. Now think about the proportion structure. The proportion structure, what is it? 3 upon 5, right? So in the iron is 3 upon 5. In the second case, what is the iron? That is 4 upon 5. What is the ratio? The ratio is, I guess, 7 is to 3. The ratio is 7 is to 3. Now, what is the average? That is 3 upon 5 plus the difference. That is 1 upon 5 into its proportion. That is 3 upon 10. So, if you solve this thing, you will get 50 is there. So, 50 is like 50. And so, that is 3 into 10, 30. So, you will get directly 33 upon 50 is the proportion of iron. If 33 upon 50 is iron, so if iron is 33 upon 50, what is nickel? That is 1 minus 33 upon 50, which is 17 upon 50. Now do the ratio, you'll get the same answer, 33 is to 17. Clear? You'll get exactly the same answer, 33 is to 17. Even sometime you also can take the values also and you can solve this question as well. So I'll show you that also. In the next video, we will start exactly how we are going to do in the other methods as well. So see you guys in the next video.